So yeah, the, the, um, another feature that we have been working on is um, a batch uh, processing. So uh, really uh, doing process migration in, in a full batch um, because yeah, we supported uh, synchronous process migration already for quite a while. But um, yeah, that's only really useful if you are working with um, a small amount of instances, right? So um, if you are working with thousands of uh, instances, ten thousands, then you really want to do it in, in a batch style uh, way. So <clears throat> just a recap of what we support uh, and how we work with process instance migration um, already for a while is um, we have V1, V2 of the same uh, process definition key, um, two tasks that are in the same, um, that are available in, in both definitions, and one additional task. So how we work with this is that um, if you have the same task also in the new version, then we do auto mapping of these tasks. So you don't have to say explicitly, I want to, uh, when I'm migrating, I want to migrate from start, tars, uh, start task to start task in V2. And that's done automatically because we can match the, the same uh, uh, element ID. But if you want to make it more specific, or if you want to say actually start task in version one should not move to start task in version two, <coughs> then you need to uh, tell that to the migration logic, obviously. Um, and the same is true for new tasks. So um, we have added the intermediate task. And here we say, if the current state is final task, then we want to migrate to the intermediate task uh, state in V2. And how do we do that? Um, there's now a process migration service. Um, last time, we still ha had uh, these methods in the runtime service, but um, because we added so, uh, some additional methods, it's now in its own uh, service, so the process migration service. Um, you can create a process uh, instance migration builder. You say, I want to migrate to this process definition ID, and here we can say, I want to map from this uh, element ID to other, that other element ID, so from, from final task in V1 to intermediate task in V2, and then just say migrate for this specific instance ID. So with this piece of logic, we are doing the migration that uh, was shown, shown on the last slide for a specific process instance synchronously. But before doing it, and actually for, for this kind of process migration, uh, you, you can quite safely just execute it. But if you have a lot more mappings, then probably you want to do some validation up front. So a, a really similar kind of, um, uh, kind of API call, you can also do to validate the migration. And then you get back uh, a process instance migration validation result. And that contains um, if there was any failure while doing the migration. Um, so it, it, it's only faking the migration. And um, after running this, you can be, be sure that the, validate, uh, the, the real migration will, will work fine. Um, instead of using the, the API directly, you can also define the migration as a JSON definition. It uses the exact same kind of um, uh, property names and, and um, language, so activity mappings and from activity ID to activity ID. But there, then you can define upfront, this is how I want to migrate from this version uh, of this process definition to another version, and you don't have to do it only with the with Java API. So you can use both approaches. And in, in addition to just those really basic uh, process migrations, uh, we can also do more complex ones. Um, this is also still fairly basic. Um, so uh, we are still mapping first task uh, in V1 to V2. That's done with auto mapping. After task, the same thing. But actually, if the current uh, state is that we are in parallel task one and two, then we want to um, move to the before task in, in the process definition V2. So that's already a little bit more complex uh, uh, to do. And actually, 
um, yeah, we can go a lot more complex than this. So uh, we can also have a call activity um, that uh, has a subprocess instance running. And then you can also say, I want to migrate uh, from uh, an element in that subprocess instance. I want to actually migrate that to a state in the parent process instance. So, and the other way around. So you can also move from the parent uh, process instance state to a subprocess instance state. So we, we, we can go quite um, deep in this. And I was just uh, discussing this afternoon about multi-instance because multi-instance is always a kind of difficult thing in, in BPMM. Um, but we also support some cases to do process migration with multi-instance, but that's uh, still not fully uh, supported in every case. So we support a couple of use cases there. And if we want to do this, then um, it's, it's, again, the same kind of uh, API. And instead of uh, saying, I want to create a mapping for a single from activity ID, you can just say, I want to map with a list of from activity IDs to a single um, activity ID. But everything else stays exactly the same. So that's uh, really where we uh, were uh, already a year back. We enhanced the process instance migration uh, quite a bit since then. So in, in 6.4.0 and 6.4.1, um, there was some more support added. Uh, actually specifically for this call activity use case with pro parent process instances, sub-process instances. Um, so that's now um, out there for a while. But it's, like I said, it's, it's for mainly for single process instances or you have to loop yourself through that list of, of all the instances that are, that, that are running. So what we have been working on now is to add batch support um, for that um, and a batch consists of multiple batch parts, and actually each batch part matches uh, a process instance. So if you want to migrate uh, a thousand process instances, you will have a thousand batch parts created. And such a batch part is executed in the, as a job. So it's just uh, like we do with asynchronous service tasks or uh, timer jobs uh, in the end as well. It's executed as part of the same job uh, infrastructure. And well, there's so, some things that we have to um, deal with as well is you, you also want to keep track of uh, the full batch status as well because if you have a thousand uh, instances, yeah, uh, let's say after 30 seconds, how far are we in, in, in that batch? Uh, which percentage did already complete? How many have already failed? And to do that in a way um, uh, yeah, where, where you are not interfering with uh, the actual execution of each batch part, we decided to do that as a separate uh, timer job. So that timer job, I think by default, checks every 30 seconds, but you can also configure it to run every five seconds or uh, any other time period. And it will just go through all e uh, each batch part that is part of that batch and check if that batch part has already been completed, if it was failed, and it will update the batch status um, with that information. So when you are getting the, uh, the, the information about the batch result, it can be completed, of course, if, if you are calling it um, after everything is done, but it can also hold that uh, we have completed 57% of uh, the batch parts, and until now, three of them have failed, for example. It's also that kind of information that you can uh, get out of that. And the, the way this was implemented um, is, is really similar to how we did, uh, did it with jobs. So we have a batch service, like we have a, a job service. And like we do with, with jobs, it's really flu fully pluggable. Um, you can uh, just plug in your own job type if you want to. Um, we created the batch infrastructure in the same way. So we now use it ourselves for the process instance migration batches, but you can also use it for your own batches um, if you would like to do that. So it's, it's built quite uh, generically. Um, and the two tables that we have added for this are uh, the RU batch table and the RU batch bar table, which 
are quite self-explanatory. Um, so when we come back to the first example, how would this now work in, in the batch uh, kind of way? Well, actually, uh, yeah, like you maybe would also expect, it's really similar because uh, we are still doing, creating the, the mapping definition in exactly the same way. Um, and instead of calling migrate process instance for that specific process instance ID, uh, we can call batch migrate uh, process instances. And instead of passing the process instance ID, you pass the process definition ID. So if you have a thousand instances running for that uh, uh, version one process definition ID, then it will create a batch with a thousand, a thousand batch parts when uh, this method is executed. Um, a little bit more code to show what it means if you get the batch result. So you kicked off this batch um, and now you are interested in what is actually happening or what is the progress of, of this batch. So what you can do is you can, uh, via the process migration service, get the result of, of this uh, specific batch and you can get a status uh, which could be completed or in progress or whatever. And from um, that migration result, you can also get all the migration parts. So you can, get, you, you can literally call get all migration parts, then you get everything, all the completed ones, all the failed ones, all the ones in progress, waiting, um, just everything. But you can also really specifically say, give me all the failed migration parts uh, until now. Then you get the ones that are already executed and failed. And there are a couple more methods like this, like waiting, migration parts, completed, and, and cetera. And if you loop uh, through these failed migration parts, but that's the same thing for the waiting or completed, it's, it's the same object structure, you will get the result of each ba batch part as well. So it's um, result fail uh, or result uh, success. And there's also a, a status message um, in that uh, part as well. So in this case, the batch part has failed. So there's some detailed information about why did it fail. Um, so you can uh, see exactly what, what has happened. If it was successful, then I think this message will just uh, contain nothing. Um, so in, in addition to the to the code uh, possibilities. We also added this capability for uh, doing batch migration in the global uh, app and application in, in the open source project. So I uh, prepared a couple of um, uh, instances, just uh, three in, in this example, and they are running in a very simple process definition uh, with just one task to keep it uh, simple, mostly for me. Um, and if we then switch to the Flowable app and application, so that was flow, the Flowable task application. If we now go to the Flowable uh, app and application, um, I have a couple of definitions deployed and I have migrate test one as a process definition in version three and version four. Version three, if we take a look at that, uh, that's actually the, the definition with just that single task. So we can see here that we have three running instances for that uh, process definition. Uh, so that matches the, what we just saw in, in Flowable Task. If we now go to version four, then we just added task two to really keep it simple. Um, and this is actually the, the the, the process definition where we want to migrate to uh, for these tasks, uh, for these instances that I just uh, have shown. So what we can uh, do here now, um, I have to go back to version three. I can say I want to migrate all the instances for this current process definition, and I can select the new target definition. So I'm selecting version four. And really similar to how you can also do it for a single um, process instance, we can now say actually 
we don't even need to say anything because task one will be auto mapped to task one in version two. But let's just select them because then we can do something. Um, now we just say uh, task one from V1 needs to be mapped to task one of V2. And I can say execute this batch migration. Yes. So if we now go back to flowable task, then still I have these uh, uh, same instances running. But if I now look at uh, the instance diagram, you can see that um, these, uh, uh, this instance is migrated to that other version. And the same is true for, uh, for the other ones as well. If we go back now to flowable admin, you can see next to jobs, there's now a batches uh, tab. And um, if I go to the one of today, um, then here I can, can get some specific information about the batch that has been executed. So I can see the, some specifics about the batch document, like um, I'm migrating to uh, V4 of, of this uh, process definition. And I have defined this act activity mapping, which is just uh, very technical IDs that are mapped to each other, but you could give that also useful names, of course. Um, here you can also see some more information, like when was it created? Um, you can see the uh, process definition where we migrated from and the process definition where we migrated uh, to in this way. Uh, batches are also multi-tenant by default, so that there's also a tenant uh, identifier uh, for a batch. Um, so that should work fine. Then there's an overview of all the succeeded parts and all the failed parts. And like you would expect, we have three succeeded parts and you can um, see some more detailed information about uh, that here as well. Uh, if something would have failed, then it would have been shown uh, in, in this list. Um, did I, yeah. So that's the um, stuff that we have added to Flowable um, Admin to support the, 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 the concept of, of batches as well. Um, of course, it's not as sophisticated as it um, uh, could be, uh, so that uh, we could still add some enhancements uh, there. Um, the, idea, the plan is now to make uh, the stuff that I, I have just uh, shown part of uh, the upcoming 6.5 uh, uh, release, so everything is just ready to be released. Nothing needs to be uh, done beforehand. And then as, as a next step, and that's a bigger thing that we um, um, are working on is to also add similar support to 4K instance migration. So um, we did a major effort for process instance migration, but the good thing is we built that based on the change state logic. Uh, Paul showed that actually also a bit in the, um, in the demo that he was uh, showing that you could move the state of a running instance to, to another state. And that was really the foundation of the process instance migration that we did. And uh, we already did that change state uh, implementation for case instances as well. So the foundation uh, is, is already there. Um, it needs some more sophistication because it doesn't handle every uh, use case yet. Um, but that's something we will be working on. And then when that's added, uh, adding the support for case instance migration in batches is, is a very uh, uh, simple step to do next, so that's something we can really do uh, uh, easily. So that's what we are planning to do in the, in the next months to uh, uh, keep improving this.